I know I've got one left in me. This is where the magic's made. Come on, Manchester. We're coming for you. Okay, so it's three by 10K day, the biggest session of the training block. Here's the session details. So it's two Ks warm up, three times 10K with one K floats, one K cooldown, giving us a total run of 36 Ks. Effort wise, we're looking to progress into marathon pace. So we're starting off slightly slower, um, progressing closer. And the last one, we're on sort of hit marathon pace, which goal marathon pace is 319 per kilometer. I've come to do the session at my training playground. That's a sea park, so good for sessions. It's just blocked off from cars, the perfect loop. And it's about 11 degrees. Conditions are decent, but there are some dark clouds in the air. Let's see if it stays that way. Current pace is 326 per kilometer, which would give you a 224 marathon. Feeling good, but it's early, early, very early days for this session. 30 Ks worth of volume. This is the first one right here. Okay, so while you're watching me doing laps and laps around Battersea Park and this monster session, I'm gonna give you some insights into my fueling. It's definitely the most common question I get asked, how I fuel for sessions, how I fuel for race day. I haven't covered it off in any of my previous vlogs, so let me show you exactly how I do that. But before I do, I just wanna give a massive shout out to one of the runners that I coached that followed me today on the bike, James, absolute legend. It helps having someone there so much and even more of a bigger legend when you just see what these conditions turn into. I definitely had the easier job running on the bike. I can't explain to you just how important fueling is when it comes to marathon training and marathons in itself. Think of a car needs petrol or diesel to run off. We need fuel in order to perform to the best of our abilities. And another thing I'd mention is that we all so different. So what works for me might not necessarily work for you. Nutrition, it's a whole different world. There's nutrition specialists out there. Um, I work quite closely with one. It, it opened my eyes up quite a bit. Um, but what I would say is trial and error. Try things that you think will work. If they don't work, try something else. If you find something that works for you, stick with it and don't change it. Trust me, it's too risky to try and change things in this game and we work far too hard in training to try and change things before race day um, and run the risk of having an upset stomach or something like that. So I started the session at around 11 in the morning. I had my breakfast two to two and a half hours before, so between 8.30 and nine. And what I had was my go-to, peanut butter on bagels, two bagels, peanut butter and a bit of honey on top, that's it. Here's my current peanut butter of choice. As you know, I'm a peanut butter addict. Please give me your best recommendations. Then with an hour to go, I'll have an oat style bar. Just something small and that'll digest easily. Rewinding to the night before a big session or race day, what I'll have is excess carbs from about two days out. So especially for race day, um, good carbs, things like sweet potato, whole wheat pasta, brown rice, whole wheat bread, sort of that you know slow release carbohydrate is what you're after in the marathon world with a bit of protein with that. So I'll have some salmon or chicken fillets and just stay away from spicy food. For me, that's hard. I love my spicy food, but you don't want to run the risk of getting any tummy issues in big sessions and race day. Now onto how many carbs you should be having per hour. So anywhere from about 60 grams to 100 grams per hour on race day is good. When I first got into running, my stomach could probably only handle around 60. So at the moment, I'm taking just over 100 grams of carbs per hour on race day, made up of the following. On this run, at the start and throughout, I had a science and sport beta fuel drink mix. There's 80 grams of carbs in this. On race day, I'll take two. For this session, I just took one. I'm not quite working as hard as I will when I give Manchester Marathon an absolute full send for 42.2 kilometers soon. I'm lucky enough to have an elite entry for Manchester and a few of the recent marathons I've done, but this has only come in my recent years. And prior to this, and a lot of people watching this will not have elite entries, um, try and see if possible, you can get someone supporting you en route to hand you a drink mix even halfway. But if you don't, that's completely fine as well. Try and do a bit of research into what fuel is gonna be at your goal race. I know, for example, at London Marathon, they've got Lucas Aid Sports. So practice that within training, get your gut used to it. If it works for you, great, you know it's gonna be on route. If it doesn't, you know you're gonna stay away from it on route. At Manchester Marathon, I know it's supported by Science and Sports. So once again, look at what your route has to offer 
Work with that in training, get your stomach used to it so you can take full advantage on race day. Then right at the start of the session and in my marathon, regularly throughout, I have a shot of Ketone IQ. The ketones are an extra source of energy. Physically, they make me feel good, but mentally they sharpen you up and it requires concentration in order to push your body to the full extent in these sessions. As you can see in my session now, the rain started coming down quite hard. The wind started picking up more and more as the session went on. So you'll see a few raindrops on the camera. Now onto the gels that I take. So I take Science and Sport Beta Fuel gels. There's 40 grams of carbs in each for the session. I took one after the first 10K set and one after the second 10K set, so two in total. On race day, I'll take three. One at the start, one a third in, one two thirds in. So for the session, I've taken 80 grams of carbs and drink mix, 80 grams of carbs and gels, which is 160. The whole runs around two hours in total, plus extra ketone IQ fuel. Heading towards the last bit of my first 10k set and the mind games the session plays with you. Wow, because you're hurting. I'm not running comfortably. I'm running within myself. It's hurting, but you know you're not even a third of the way in. You really have to just try and switch the brain off and take each kilometer as it comes. My Prime X shoes are absolutely glowing and I hope come Manchester race day, they're going to be glowing just like that too. I decided to do this run in the Prime X shoe because it increases recovery. Remember for Elite and Sub Elite, it's got a stack height of 50 mil. The legal limit is 40. So it's above that. It's not legal for me to race in these, but it does significantly increase my rate of recovery, which is why I do it. Someone asked me if I had the chance to race in these, would I? And my answer was no, I'd rather race in the Pro 3s. It's a bit of a lighter shoe. I think there's not much difference in time it makes. And the only reason why I do it in this, like I said, is because recovery is quicker. My margins are so tight with me wanting to find just nine seconds over the marathon distance. So every little bit of weight in the shoe counts and at these days, the lighter, the better. If anyone from the Adidas manufacturing section is watching this and has access to a pair of Pro Evos, please send me a pair. You'll make me the happiest guy in the world. Boom, so here we are, we've ticked off that first 10K set, 34.19, an average pace of 3.26 per kilometer, exactly what the doctor ordered, feeling pretty good, and the session is going to plan at the moment. Feeling good, but there's a long way to go. I was stoked to have a bit of company for the second set. Thanks so much for joining. So the first set was done at 326 per K. For this one, I'm gonna increase it, or look to increase it to 323 per kilometer with the aim for my last one at marathon pace, 319. Let's see if I can do it. Conditions are starting to get a bit more tough, but I'm feeling pretty strong as is. I didn't go into the session very fresh at all, as you'll see at the end. But at the same time, sometimes that's what marathon training is all about. You're not going to be fresh for these sessions. On race day, it's going to get tough. So you may as well train on tired legs, hit good paces on tired legs, because that'll help you significantly come race day. Quick throwback to nutrition. I nearly forgot to show you this, but I start every single day with a science and sport hydration tablet. Hydration is key. On bigger days like this, where I've done a big session, I actually finish the days off with one as well. Getting those good electrolytes in. And then of course, one of the most important things to get the absolute best training effect that you can out of the session. And I only started doing it in my latter days of running. I wish I did it earlier. Is getting that recovery protein in within half an hour, the sooner the better. So as soon as I finish, before I've even updated my Strava, I get my SIS Rego recovery protein and aim to get around 20 to 24 grams of protein just to speed up that recovery process and give your muscles the fuel you need to recover. You work so hard in these sessions, so you wanna maximize the training effect you get out of them. They've actually just recently released a new recovery protein called Rego Clear. Look out for it, I can't wait to test it soon. In fact, I'd love to know this as well. As soon as you finish your session, do you update your Strava or do you get your recovery protein smoothie in first? Let me know in the comments. Okay, so just to recap, you're looking for around 60 to 100 grams of carbs per hour. You've practiced this numerous times, so come race day, you know exactly what works for you and exactly how it's gonna go according to plan. 
it's a really good idea to get your fuel in from a combination of energy sources. So break it down like this, a third, a third, a third, a third from liquids, so your drink mix, a third from gels, so the gels that work for you, and a third from edible chewables that you've tried. Getting your fuel in from a combination of sources also reduces the chances of getting an upset stomach throughout the race. So let's just take, for example, a four hour marathon time. If you look at the standard gels out there, the normal gel gives off around 20 grams of carbs. That means you'll take 14 gels throughout the race if you're aiming to get in 70 grams of carbs per hour. And I can almost guarantee that if you take 14 gels, you're gonna have an upset stomach towards that last third of the race. I hope you find this fueling helpful. Like I said, nutrition is a whole different world and there's nutrition specialists out there. But if you have any questions, just shout. Apart from that, I really do try and get my supplements in from a lot of natural foods. I do top up on magnesium, really good for sleeping, recovery, helps reduce chances of cramping. And there's quite a few other daily vitamins that I take, which I might showcase in another vlog coming up. But back to the running, the pace is picking up slightly and so too is this awful weather. I'm gonna keep quiet just to give you a real good effect of what it's like out there grinding through the session. Let's go. We've reached the halfway point and it's downhill from here. Always a nice mental barrier to get over. It's like ticking off the halfway points of the marathon. We've done five Ks of the second set and we've got five Ks left to go and then one last set, we've got this. The last time I did the session in my Berlin block, it went absolutely debauchously wrong and that's coming back to haunt me. So, and that's coming back to haunt me. But I'm just thinking, get through kilometer by kilometer and you can do this. Battersea is flat and fast. Manchester is definitely more hilly than this, even though it's still relatively flat, but it's got a history of pretty windy conditions. So this wind absolutely sucks at the moment, but at the end of the day, it's really good for training. I'll do a pre-race vlog next week with my mindset ahead of Manchester where I really truly believe I'm in sub 220 shape. Come on, the numbers I've hit as well as my strategy for the race day. Heading towards the end of the second case set, sub 34 minutes, 323 per kilometer, exactly what the doctor ordered. Come on, one set to go, can I progress? I know I've got one left in me. This is where the magic's made. Come on, Manchester. We're coming for you. In this last set, I really aimed to progress to hit marathon pace at 319 per kilometer. It started getting very, very tough. But my mindset is that this is the last 10 Ks of the race. Someone asked me, how do you mentally prepare for a race? Here's the answer right here. Within these sessions right here, these moments right here, this is what I think the last 10 Ks of marathon, I try and put myself into that position. Hopefully come race day, it'll be a little bit more manageable, but that's exactly what helps get me into the zone. So 
no more voiceovers, no music, just absolutely pure grinding and taking control over the demons in your head that are telling you to slow down because we're not slowing down. Okay, let's have an overview of some of the key stats from this session. The first of which is the 10k blocks. First one on the money, second one on the money, third one I wasn't quite able to progress but I didn't want to force it at the same time. He has a look at my heart rate graph. Each set it gradually climbs. It's exactly what you're after, no sudden surges. Have a look at that, 80% of this effort was within zone 4, probably fairly similar to race day with a bit of zone 3 and hopefully a bit more of zone 5 on that day. As you can see clearly from this, I'm right side dominant, 52% on my right side, 48% on my left side. That's why single leg work and strength work within training is crucial. All the work was aerobic. We gave the session a really good send. Here's a summary on Strava, 36 Ks in total, 330 average pace with an elevation gain of only 34 meters over the 30 Ks. Yep, I told you Battersea's flat. Just over two hours of running in total. This one's for the Strava police out there, as I know there are a few. Your elapsed time should be very similar to your move time. You wanna limit the amount of time you stop. I only stop for 45 seconds throughout the session. And racing, you don't stop, so you wanna avoid this in, in training too. Thanks for watching, I hope you find this helpful. If you've got a race coming up, let me know in the comments below. Good luck, let's give it a full send. Let's leave nothing out there, but let's not take for granted how lucky we are to be able to do the sport. Stay tuned for my post session thoughts. So nice to tick off the biggest session of the block and you'll see the endorphins flow immediately after. Shaka laka guys, so nice to tickle. That longest run of the block, wow. Often I say that's harder than marathon day. 36 Ks, 30 Ks of volume, solo in the rain, windy. Whew. Honestly, I, I hope race day is easier than that. <laughs> um, you know what, execution wise, I think, given how I felt at the start, like it's been one hell of a week. Um, little one's been homesick from nursery. I'm actually feeling goodish, but not firing on all cylinders. So, you know, I think the first two sets went absolutely perfectly. Last set, sort of three Ks and I started feeling it. And I thought, let me not chase it. I think I could have. And in the past, I've like emptied the tank to get there. But I held back, held back. The last K was my fastest. So I pulled it back towards the end. Um, and yeah, honestly, just really good session to bank. So I need to pull my socks up. I've got a lot of work to do which is so nice to get that one in the bank. Last time it was awful. This time it was awful, but better execution. Onwards and upwards, let's go.